So the barometric formula allows us to calculate how much the air pressure changes with altitude, but it's based on a very simple model. So it's 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 not a perfect calculation of what the what the air pressure actually is. So it assumes a couple of things, and um, one of them is something we use a lot with gases, and that's it assumes the ideal gas law for air, which is given the, the low pressure we're talking about, that's actually a pretty good approximation. It also assumes that T is constant. And as you know, when you go up to the mountains, it cools down. And so this one actually is, is kind of an approximation. It turns out it's, it's, it doesn't affect the answer enough to make this a bad approximation. So the barometric formula is a good way to get an estimate of how the pressure is gonna vary with altitude. Okay, so to do this, you're gonna actually set up a free body diagram. And so you're gonna imagine a puck, like a hockey puck of air, just floating here in space. And so it has these boundaries, and they're, they're purely imaginary boundaries, but they work for us. And so whenever you do a problem like this, you need to set up your axis system and, and where's the zero of your axis, or the origin, set that up. So we're gonna set this up to be sea level is the zero of Z, and Z is how high we are. So if we imagine this puck, we're gonna have it be thickness dz, so it's a little tiny slice of, of thickness. And uh, we say that the bottom of the puck is at height z, and the top of the puck is gonna be at height z plus dz. So we're at z here, and we're at z plus dz here. So I'll call it z naught since to say that it's a constant. Okay, so I've got this puck of thickness dz, and it's got facial area a, we'll just call it a for now. and what we're gonna do, we wanna figure out how pressure varies with height. We can do this by solving a free body diagram of the forces on this puck. So here's the puck, I'm just gonna draw it as a dot instead of a puck. Let's see, what are the forces on it? Well, there's a force downward mg, right? Because air weighs something, so there's a force downward of just the mass of the air inside that puck. Okay, there's also pressure on it. Well, if you think about it, there's two pressures. There's the pressure of the air pressing down from above. And because air is a fluid, it's also pressing up from below. Okay, so if we think about it though, those pressures are not identical because the whole point of this was that pressure varies with height. So we'll say that there's a pressure at Z naught here and it's gonna be pushing up and there's a pressure pushing down at Z naught plus DZ right here. So we'll say there's pressure pushing down and there's, there's pressure pushing up, but those two numbers aren't the same. And in fact, we know the pressure is less above than below, right? Pressure goes down with height, but in fact, that's okay because that's balanced out by this extra force, the, the mass of the air pushing down, the weight of the air pushing down. Now, force is not the same as pressure, right? If we take pressure times area, we will get force, okay? Because pressure is in units of newtons per square meter. So if we multiply that by area in square meters, we get a force, we get newtons. Okay, so now we can write an equation. We can say the force upward at equilibrium, the force upward is just P at Z naught times A and that's equal to the force downward, which is P at Z naught plus DZ times A, plus this MG term, where MG is just the mass of that puck. Okay, so now we're going to have to, there's way too many variables here, so we're gonna to have to try to put these variables in terms of other things. And in doing so, we're gonna invoke the ideal gas law. So, uh, Let's leave these terms alone and just play with this mg term. So I'll just put ditto marks here to say that we're, we're not touching these terms. Well, the mass of that puck is going to be the density, I'm gonna write rho for density of the puck times the volume of the puck. So volume times density gives you mass. So all I've done is replace mass with volume and density, great. I'm gonna keep working here. I'm going to say that the density of the gas is the molar mass of the gas times the pressure over RT. So I've just done that to get rid of density. And I'm gonna replace the volume of the puck with its facial area 
times the thickness dz, right? So if we take this area of the puck and multiply it by the thickness, that gives us the volume. Okay, and by doing that, I've gotten rid of variables that aren't related to these and replacing with variables that are. Okay, the last step we're gonna do, well, I'll just rewrite that first line here, and then we can see we've got the facial area A in all of our terms, which is great, because now we can get rid of it. Okay, so cancel, cancel, cancel. It's in all three terms. Great. And now what we're going to do is we're going to gather the pressure terms on one side. We've got PZ naught, and we'll say minus PZ naught um, P at Z naught plus DZ. And so we're just, we're just subtracting this from both sides. We're subtracting the P at Z naught plus DZ. And then we're going to gather this together and make it a little neater. We've got the molar mass of the gas, the gravitational constant G. We've got P and the whole thing times dz over rt. Okay, now this is getting good because we're trying to look at pressure as a variable, how it varies with height z, so we've got those variables in there. t is a constant because that was an assumption we made. r is a constant, molar mass is a constant, g is a constant, so our only variables at this point are p and z, so we're getting really close to the end. So if we think about the pressure change as we go from here to here, this would be final minus initial. So final minus initial would be P at the height, that's Z plus DZ minus Z naught. And that's the opposite of what we have here. So this is not final minus initial, so this is minus DP. We can also, uh, what we want to do is gather the same variables on the same side. So let's divide both sides by P. So we have molar mass times G times DZ over RT. So very often in PCAM, what we want to do is we do a problem. We want to have one variable on one side and one variable on the other. And very often it will be a, an infinitesimal of one variable on the other. So we have our P and DP over here. We have our DZ over here. And all these other things are constants, which means we can integrate. Great. We'll do that on the next page. I'll just move that negative sign over to the other side here. So now we've got dp over p, mgdz over rt, and we're going to integrate. And remember, we're starting down here. We'll call this pressure at sea level p naught, and z is equal to zero. And we're going to go up to some new pressure. I'll call it p final, maybe, and z final. How about that? So we have to make sure that our limits of integration match our physical diagram. So in other words, we're integrating from p naught to p final, and we're going to integrate from z equals 0 to z final. Then you do the integral. We can see that, oh, and don't skip steps. Leave the limits out and plug them in afterwards. You'll be less prone to make mistakes. So we're going to integrate that and get the log of p. We'll integrate the right-hand side, and we'll pull out all the constants. So we've got minus mg over rt. And then we just have to integrate dz. That's just going to be z. And we can put our limits right here. We have to plug in z final and 0. So. This just means we haven't plugged in the limits yet. So we have to plug those in, and we have to plug each one into the full expression. So occasionally I'll see students try to plug in delta inside, and that's not right, okay? Because it's we have to plug we have to plug the upper limit integration into the whole expression and then subtract the uh, lower limit plugged into the whole expression. So it's not the log of delta p. That would be totally wrong. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug those limits in so we have the log of p final minus the log of p naught 
and on the right hand side we have minus molar mass times g over rt and then we plug in z final minus zero so that's just going to be z final so we can simplify this by saying this is going to be the log of p final over p naught and write this out since we just have a zero, we can see it's just mz, mg times z over rt. Take the exponent of both sides, and we get p final over p naught is equal to e to the minus mg over rt. And if we multiply both sides by p naught, we get our final expression. p at some altitude final is equal to p naught e to the minus mg z or h or whatever you want to call the altitude over rt. So that's the first derivation in thermodynamics and notice it gave us a chance to practice a little bit of integration and to apply the ideal gas law. Oh, one final word. I used something without really explaining how I got it. So I'm going to do one last thing, and you can skip over this part if you already understand how to get density of an ideal gas from the ideal gas law. So density is defined as mass over volume. So if we want to figure out the density of an ideal gas, we have to figure out the mass and the volume. Well, the mass of a given amount of gas is going to be the number of moles times the molar mass, right? Because so we've got, notice, moles, and we can put molar mass in kilograms per mole. And so you can see that that's going to cancel and you're going to have a mass. Great. What about the volume? Well, if we solve PV equal, NRT, PV equal NRT for V, we get NRT over P. So we plug that expression for volume in up here, we get nRT over P. So we've got to put the P up on top. And we can see that we cancel the n's. And that makes sense because density doesn't matter how much stuff you have. And we get density of an ideal gas. I'll put eight IDL for ideal gas law. Um, is going to be molar mass times the pressure over RT. So we use the density of the ideal gas in our expression for the barometric formula and that's that's where we got it.